fertilized seabird guano. Why? Because guano. Yeah, but I make sure it's I make sure it's I make sure it's sterilized. So if I can't find a sterilized source, you just put it in your oven. Or I actually have a crappy outdoor oven that I use for that kind of stuff. Now the reason that I came up with seabird guano is because I started talking to different biologists, and seabirds and fish have evolved together over millions of years. So the chances are is that the most most of that seabird guano is going to be compatible with the fish because most fish have dealt with some kind of, of, of bird-based manure in their existence, right? And you can get seabird guanos that are very high in phosphates. So that's where I use my phosphate. That's where I've been using phosphates, and I did that for a year in Costa Rica, and I never had any fish disease using it. So that's one example of, of how you can add phosphates. If you want to add more nutrients to the water, more nitrates, where does that start, guys? It starts with the building block, which is... Ammonia, exactly. So really all you need to do is increase your feed level or increase your stocking rate. Up goes your ammonia, which becomes more food for the bacteria and organisms, and boom, out the other end comes more nitrate, right? But real quick, what I want to do is explain this fish house a little bit and the things that I like and don't like about it. I pretty much like everything about it. Now, this fish house is actually inspired by me, and he asked me what would be a cheap way that I could build a long fish house that was narrow and connected to the greenhouse. So I told him, why not just go with IBCs? You have a connection to it through your hydroponic world. He used to be a hydroponic business, uh, supp hydroponic supply company. Why not just see if you can buy them? You can get a really good price on them. They're easy to work with. You can put these cheap little uniseals in it. So he did. Instead of buying it one expensive tank, which wouldn't fit in here very well, he bought multiples IBCs and ran from one tank to the next, to the next, to the next. Now there's six tanks in here, 330 gallons each. What I don't like about it, it, it's very cheap. You probably paid about $550 to $600 for all these tanks. And what is the math on that, guys? 300 times 6 is 1,800, right? So he's got 1,800 gallons. 1,800 gallons for 550 bucks is pretty darn good. So he, he saved money here. But what I don't really like about the particular layout, which is not bad, it just means you have to pay attention, is that one fish tank flows to the next, to the next, to the next. Why, why could that be a problem, guys? Anybody know? Disease. Disease in one just goes to the rest. Waste. Disease is a good one, too, but the main one I want to focus on first is that the last one gets all the waste, right? Or everyone downstream, the waste is building up. So there's ways around that. You know, you can feed the, the guys on the end first and work your way backwards. There's a bunch of different ways around that. You can rotate when you feed what tanks and alternate times and days, things like that. Uh, you can, of course, minimize your feed and all that. But basically, it, on a well-maintained system, oh, the stocking can be different, right? So you can have more fish in your first, first tank. first tank, less in your next, less in the next, less in the next. So you don't have as many fish struggling with the ammonia and the oxygen level, right? So this is a really great layout. But what would be the ultimate solution to this, guys? John, please don't answer. I want to see if these guys can figure it out. What would be the solution? to use all these tanks exactly how they are and have them all have the exact same um, bio load and nutrient load. Link them back together. Run them back through the plants and back. Bring the water back first one. Put it in parallel yeah, instead of series? Yeah, it's not bad. That's, that, what, what was that again? In parallel instead of series? That's right, and how exactly would you do that? You run a long pipe along it to connect to the other uh, one. What, that's throwing in all of them at the same time. You got it, but there's only one way to do that efficiently and evenly, and that's the term I want you guys to hammer into your head, a distribution manifold. And a distribution manifold is a fancy name for an oversized pipe. Right? So along this wall, you can see he has a distribution manifold for his air. He has a larger air line in the back with smaller air lines coming off it so that all of the air stones have equal air. Now imagine the same thing if he had a larger pipe in the background with smaller pipes coming flowing into each of the tanks with a manifold. Maybe all those pipes could go under the floor where we are so we're not tripping over them. And you'd have a manifold on the other side of this wall which would distribute that water evenly to the grow beds. I mean, I'm sorry, behind this wall which would distribute that water evenly to the solid separator, right? Let me clarify that. So that's the easy solution. But Doing this this way is slightly cheaper and easier to build. So he's, he's done a little trade-off. He saved money and time, saved labor, but now he's got to pay, pay more attention to the system. I don't see any oxygen flowing though. I turned it off because it was so loud that I was okay. yelling. So hey, just for the heck of it, John or whoever's down there, you mind turning on those two power bars so we can see that circulation that I'm talking about? So once again, um, this is 
Uh, Jed is using my is using our style, which is using a square tank with air stones at the bottom, and the air stones are lifting up any fish waste and bringing it up to the top before it leaves out the exit filter. You guys can see there's an exit pipe that has a bunch of holes drilled in it so the fish can't escape, right? Yeah, um, let me show you guys that on the way out. Why don't we all go out to the front of the fish house one more time here, guys? Where's the settling tank and the filter is directly behind the fish out here. Uh, so I encourage you guys after this to walk around back and take a look at the filtration setup. Um, so what I wanted to show you guys, and I kind of wanted to show John too, why don't listen, everybody come past me and walk down here, you're going to want to see this. So, what I want to show you guys is something mind blowing. Aquaponics is quite literally the most energy efficient food production system I've ever encountered. And the proof is right here. This aquaponics system feeds the community of Mendocino County, feeds the community, you know, obviously I'm not saying feeds everyone, but this is producing Surprise. food, food for people. It's producing a living for an entire family, plus an employee, right? The family works here. This is his whole sole source of income. No, producing his wife has a store. Oh, okay. He said that's what keeps him alive. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm sorry, I blew the story. Oh, no. <laughs> I need to know that before I start repeating what I thought. And it goes to show i got to talk to Jed more. Thank you for sharing that. So, but in any case, let's put the money aside. This aquaponics system that's working so well and has been running for many years now, has been running the entire, well, just about two years now, is running entirely off of that little 60-watt pump. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? 60 watts, that is the same power as a light bulb. And we have hundreds of fish, tens of thousands of plants running off of a tiny little pump that cost $100. So what did he do? Did he buy one pump? No, he busted out $200 and he got two pumps. Because what happens when this thing goes bad and he's 30 minutes from town? You better have a backup pump or backup parts to fix this thing, otherwise you're in trouble. Personally, I like if it's any if it's my commercial operation, I have two pumps plumbed, ready to go. One of them switched off, but they're both plugged in all the time. That way, if one goes off, you're right, ready to go instantly to turn on the next one. And you don't have to hassle. You don't have to look for the right fitting. You don't have to look for matching pumps or whatever. So I do that with my air systems as well. He, I asked him, "Do you have any extra pumps of these?" He says he has a bunch of these extra air pumps. <coughs> but just so you know, I am not here to pick on Jed. I am not picking on Jed. I'm giving you guys options and different things and things the ways that we've learned that, and the different reasons that we make our, our decisions. Jed chose these pumps here. Right? He chose these ridiculously noisy air pumps because he, he came from a hydroponic company. His hydroponic company, he had connections, so he got these air pumps ridiculously cheap. But each one of these pumps uses about 120 watts of energy. One of it says on here, I would like to know. Each one of these uses 112 watts. He has eight pumps. So that's, that's like eight. That's close to eight amps, yep, eight amps an hour. Yep, eight amps an hour. It's a thousand watts. He's using a thousand watts here. Now he he, he likes it because he saved money. I think he said he paid about sixty dollars each for this. So six times eight is four hundred and eighty dollars. For four hundred and eighty dollars, you can buy a very nice blower that will use half the amount of electricity, be one quarter the volume of noise and will be far, far longer service life guaranteed. We'll produce less heat. These all produce heat, everything produces heat. That's not an issue, but it is an issue if it's 110 degrees out and you're heating the water with your air pump. That's not something you want to do. Are those also used for in the air as well? Yes, this, these, air, these six air pumps, six are for the tanks and six are for the greenhouse. Well, one blower's 
satisfy the needs for all one blower would satisfy the needs for everything but now your entire system is dependent on one, one blower. blower so generally one speaking dr Rokosi recommends one blower for the fish and one, one blower for the for the greenhouse once again you could still save power you could use those those white water ones i told you which are smaller line those are very cheap you could get the smaller one which is 250 dollars and that could run your fish here and you can get the larger one which is 300 yeah you're a little over what he paid here but you're far far below the power we're talking about maybe 350 watts instead of a thousand and a fraction of the noise so you're looking at the long game not the short game exactly he was but but i'm not, I'm not making fun of jed or, or no. down. <coughs> jed did jed did what was right for his connections in the community he had access to these cheap rattlers so he bought them you know oh let me and guess that's a one 110 liter little wait come check this out man there's a 